Laning early game has been very solid. Yeah. Generally getting minion leads here. We'll see if they can make this one pay off. Robert XE is Twitch banned away at the start. Team still Mid saying, well, if your bot lane is your strong point, we'll remove the parts that are going to carry from there. Nidalee removed from Bjergsen. We'll see if there's going to be some kind of aggressive mid lane going on here. It's probably trying to push him onto a certain champion to win the matchup. It's very hard to push Bjergsen onto stuff, though. He will. He's even picked up Soraka. Yeah. Which is kind of a testament to his ability, to his willingness to adapt. I know a lot of super, super good mid laners in the past have kind of been stubborn about their champion picks. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, you know, I don't want to play Soraka if it's too easy or something. But Bjergsen, when he has that as a threat, he just uses it in his arsenal and becomes even more powerful. Yeah, we've seen there's teams that have like risen and fallen with patches. A random example being uh, Samsung Ozone out of nowhere, kind of where Dada didn't have the champion pool for Worlds. Yes. And then finally started learning champions that work now, like his Yasuo is amazing. But yeah, there, there's guys in the pro scene, you see him kind of go up and down. So Twitch, Shivana banned away as well. Evelyn removed from Amazing. Looks like not four jungle bans, but at least removing that one. Soraka removed from Prawley. Champion, he's happy to play, but won't be able to. And now, one more ban for Complexity. Yeah, there's a lot of available. I mean, you almost want to ban Lee Sin just because Amazing has so much experience on it. But then with stuff like Jax still available, would TSM even use the first pick on Elise Sin? There's definitely some things to consider, which I think is why Complexity is taking so much time with this final ban. And it's going to be the LeBlanc also removed. So three mid lane bans, one top, one jungle, one AD. Keeps a little bit now to consider what they're going to go for. I think he's hovered Yi many times, yeah. but Cassidyn has been left available. Probably did not work very well with that champion against LMQ. So now it's TSM's turn to say, here's how it's played. Bjergsen getting to play his new assassin buddy. Now, we haven't gotten to talk too much about the new Cassidyn because he has been banned so much. Yeah. I would actually say, so if we compare him to the Cassidyn that was banned all throughout the spring split before the rework, I'd say the early game now is stronger. Yeah. And the late game, the hyper late game, is also stronger. But there's a big dip in the entire middle of the game. You don't see those catalyst tier of the goddess Cassidens running around and killing people. True. He's actually very weak in the mid game, where many of these games currently are decided. So that's actually a very risky pick to me. It is, we'll see if he gets held down. I mean, you can last it under a turret, but how well can you make the plays in the mid game? One thing I've really noticed about the Cassidens as well is the difference in power between level 15 and 16 is massive. Your yes. ulti goes from a five to a three second cooldown and it just makes a very big difference. Again, just back up your point about this late game being so good. Complexity, though, you're going to get Jax and Lee Sin. So Broken Shard, his second Lee Sin game with a split, and hey, you've got a Jax in there for West Rice. Makes some good sense. West Rice should hopefully be able to get going. It's going to be hard, though. Dyrus is very good at keeping down uh, enemy top laners from carrying the game too hard. Mm -hmm. Picking a Jax for West Rice. He hasn't been very successful, even in the promotion tournament, individually. So Jax is something that he needs to do very well individually on to be successful. The least in though for Broken Shard, uh, he's had a lot of success on. All right, so Complexity do manage to corner some pretty top tier picks and half their lineup at TSM get their bottom lane in as well. And with almost every champion from that role being available, they got pretty much the cream of the crop for yep. this one. TSM's lineup also does look very strong. They could even go with an Elise jungle as well. I mean, I actually don't feel like there's a support jungler combo stronger in the game right now than the Mor Morgana plus Elise. Mm. Only because of the three second dark binding and the two second stun from Elise is just too much lockdown for people to deal with. I almost never see that combo lose. Yeah, even like Elise Thrash, like as good as that is, you're right, it's, it's a one and a half second hook instead of a three second binding. Yeah. Uh, we did get to see that last game, but uh, now we're gonna see what happens with this one. Complexity now, 12 seconds to go for their next two picks for this one. Most lanes are available. Robert actually Definitely big on Corky. Zyra once again, Bubba Dub playing a lot of this champion. And it's a gigantic AoE magic damage grouping. Yeah, I mean, we have to consider as well Twitch and Lucian off the board. Robert X Lee gets to pick from the rest of the 80 carries. What does he think is the third best? Uh, against Lucian, he wants to match him with Dash. Good AoE damage. A lot of magic damage as well to go with a fairly physical heavy lineup so far. Yeah. And there's also uh, picking uh, Zyra, which Glebe ended up picking in the previous game. Yep. It's just a whole bunch of damage, so if TSM does go in, uh, that can be pretty threatening. One thing to keep in mind is Cassidy in the shield is magic damage only, so pretty much no matter who he fights against, he's going to block some of that damage. Make There's a chance. I mean, it depends on Prawley's champion pool here, because he's a Ziggs player by trade. Mm -hmm. 
but a Ziggs against a Kassadin isn't a fantastic matchup. You would almost want to pick physical damage against Kassadin. But then there's the question of do they have too much Yasuo damage on their team. You know, with the Corky and the Zara, they probably have enough magic damage to work in. But a Yasuo could work very nice here. But he's a Ziggs by trade. Yeah, he's a Ziggs <laughs> by trade. Types in GG. Tells his teammate to do that. Clicks the only champion available. There we go. So how well can Bjergsen hold on to his lane? I mean, Ziggs is pushing is incredibly strong. Yeah. Kassadin's follow-up to an Elise Sync isn't amazing. So maybe that, you know, probably gets to push and doesn't get punished for it. Exactly. We look at these team compositions as well. Uh, Complexity has a lot of pushing, especially in the middle of the bot lane, and a whole bunch of damage team-wide. Mm. But then I'd say if I look at TSM's lineup, they have much more control. Yeah. The Elise and Morgana combos. But then you just add into the fact Cassidy's a slow bot. Renekton also has a very long stun if he yep. wants to get it right. It's not a high damage team, but it's a high control team. And TSM wants to control Complexity, who always tries to make big plays. Sure. So they should be able to shut him down that way. We'll see if they can make it happen if they can get the early game pressure and snowball out from there. There's a champion slide onto the rift. Let's see who you guys voted to win. Well, 91% vote for TSM to win over Complexity. Another pretty commanding vote for these guys. Over 90. They had a lot of those last split. We'll see how many more of them they can get here. But you can also send your picks during the game by tweeting at LOL Esports. Use the hashtag TSM win or COL win. We'll be checking in on the vote periodically to see which way the winds are blowing. See, With no Yasuo in the game, it's hard to say. Yeah, well, there's no wall in the way. I mean, no Riven either. There's so many. No Janna. There's a lot of wind in League of Legends. There is, actually. But I guess with 119 champions, there's a whole bunch of everything. Yes, there is. <laughs> <laughs> like, they need a physical damage mid laner. It's like, yeah. there's like 17 options. <laughs> yeah. And no, not yeah, going to be the case with this one. Yep. Lee Sin, Jarvan, if you're Froggen. Yep, back in the day. Yeah. Shin Zhao. Yeah, if you're Guardsman Bob or someone else. Those are fun. I like mid Sin Zhao's. They're Nocturne cool. mid. Pantheon. I fought a Nocturne mid, I lost to it. All right, we've proven our point. Yeah, so we're <laughs> we have a game about that. <laughs> we've kind of only up to like yeah. 11, but you know the rest of them are out there, don't yeah, so worry. Yeah, so TSM uh, would definitely need this one. They want to go 2-1. Yeah. Complexity would like to avoid going 0-3. This is an incredibly tough week they've been having as well. Oh, sure. And it's not getting any easier playing against Team Solo. Team Solo mid, the top two team from the last split. Plenty of fans in attendance. I like how anytime we mention a TSM member in the pregame, we're like, players to watch, and like he's on TSM, TSM chance to start. Mm -hmm. Like, I love... The crowd for showering out, Boy like shouting out for their favorite players. It's a whole bunch of fun. It makes it great to cast here in live audiences. One of the big improvements over season three. Go Glebe. Absolutely. Go Glebe. Welcome yeah. to Says the crowd. Glebe had a difficult time trying to protect Wild Turtle in that last one. Well, uh, that's Wild Turtle's fault. That was, yeah. <laughs> As I think we can all agree. <laughs> He's got to play safer in this one on Lucian. But the team with a bunch of control will actually set up Wild Turtle for a very big game. He should have the finishing damage if they start getting this game rolling. Well, Wild Turtle right now, not learning his lesson. He's alone in the mid lane, in range of Prolly. He gets hit by the Q, by the way. The health bar has gotten chunked out, so. 0 for 1 dodging skill shots, Wild Turtle. It's a bad ratio. Yeah. As of now. Wonder if we're going to see these delayed level 1s, if we're going to see the lane swaps. It's interesting because, ooh. Prolly is 2 for 2. For two. So Fire they're going to scout. There's potential this is just for warding. And we've been seeing a lot more lane swaps, Freak. Mm -hmm. You and me were trying to have a very lengthy discussion about this. But there is some delayed oh. evades. Amazing is late getting out. Wild Thunder gets spotted. So Q hits a spiderling. Wild Thunder gets over the wall, gets rooted up. And Dyer's going to defend him. So aside from winning the wrong skill of a one, nothing lost for TSM. Yikes. That was real scary. Nothing lost yet because at least yeah. they've already lost Morgana and Complexity is invading five strong. Uh, this could very well be a slightly late jungling start for Amazing because they have to abandon this move up. And it also dictates the formation of the lane. It looks like Complexity is going to have to stay up here if they want to keep experience, which means we get standard lanes. Yeah, I mean, kind of. It's upside down. We have Australian standard lanes. And Complexity going to go ahead and try to get their two buff start. Lee Sin going to make his way to his own red buff. And Amazing and Dyrus going to start out uh, down here, but realize that because the quote-unquote top lane is going to be forced to 1v1 lane, you don't get to double jungle for very long. Amazing grabs his red buff, the recall in from West Rice. He'll TP yeah. back into lane with a ward and some potions. And this kind of de-emphasizes slightly the AD carry and the mid lane's impact, because when we're having the double junglers happening proportionally farm-wise, 
the mid laner and the AD carry are having a bit more strength, kind of like back in the old days of the AD carries really carrying games. Yeah. But now we're back to the standard lane. Everyone is a little bit stronger as long as uh, it stays this way, which it looks like it will. Standard lane is reacting the bottom. Going to have a really good game against Rustrace. You know what's going to be weird about this, though, is uh, Westrace got the blue buff. When they invaded uh, Broken Shard, I believe he smited for it, but the blue buff actually went onto Westrace. So he's got a bit of an extra uh, bonus XP. So even though Renekton Rise, or sorry, Renekton uh, Jax is not a good matchup for Jax, maybe having a bunch of free mana will help him out. Yeah, it'll, it'll at least allow him to hopefully spam a few more last hits. The problem is he got to lane a little bit later than Dyrus. So despite the blue buff experience, he's still not going to have that big of an advantage. And if Dyrus keeps the lane shoved like this, there's no way Westrice will be able to engage. So it's kind of just to uh, survive the early landing phase, if anything. Ah, oh, so Jax is MO in the first place, so I guess he can't be too sad about it. Goes for the sun, gets some damage down, but he's going to miss the rest of the CS for that, and gets out traded as well. So 8 to 17 in minions, not the best start for him. Yeah, Renekton beats Jax for a reason. Renekton's kind of fallen out of favor a little bit, honestly, yeah. recently. Uh, lane dominance isn't a thing he can often do to people with all of the strategic lane swapping we have been seeing, especially on this 4.7 patch where it seems almost even more prevalent. But Westrice just missing the stun. Amazing. Just also missing the stun. The stun. <laughs> oh, nice attempt. Great right juking by these guys. Yeah, they're getting away from it just barely the dash at the right second. Westrice tries to pull the gank in. And the thing is, that was a lane that wasn't warded for Dyrus. If there was no counter gank, if he didn't dodge any of that, he didn't see it coming. And gets away by uh, thankfully dashing out. Yeah. Also, Prawley versus Bjergsen. If Prawley doesn't pull a lead on Bjergsen, it's indicative that Bjergsen is winning, but it's not a disaster. Another stun. This time it lands. And the Q. The Q as well. There's the flash away from Dyrus. The stun lands from Amazing to pull them off that one, but that is his summoner spell burn. Trinket Ward is now in that brush, so Broken Shred will get continually spotted as he tries to make this attempt. Yeah, Dyrus still has his teleport as well. He's going to try and stack advantages in that lane. He's coming back immediately to make sure Westrice is denied on experience. He never wants to give Westrice an upper hand because generally, if a Jax does get an upper hand in the game, mm -hmm. he's never putting the hand any lower than that. Generally always speaking, no. The upper yeah, one. the hand will always be up there. Westrice taking a stun, losing some more health. Dyrus went back to lane with double Dorans, a longsword, and no potions. He's relying on his innate sustain plus the double Dorans to keep his health bar up. If he does take a bad trade, he's got to walk back to lane with a three-minute cooldown left on his teleport. But so far... Dyrus is being dominant, both soon to hit level 5. And looks like it's Jax being zoned away. Yeah, I think he's got domination on the lane. Broken Shard's going to have to go down to help Westrice a lot. Complexity putting almost all of their resources into trying to get Westrice going. Oh, the Trinket Ward times out. Dyrus does not have Flash. The stun's going to land. Do they have the rest of the damage? Dash number 1, dash number 2 inside the minion line. The Flash E for Broken Whoa. Shard. AZ going too much. Whoa. He's going to take one more turret shot and live. But that was greedy. It's exactly greedy, and it's kind of been what's losing complexity a lot of these games, is just going too far for plays that aren't necessarily there. He got the slice and dice on Westrice, which means he closed enough distance to get near his turret, and you can't dive a rage full Renekton and expect to get away with it. He lost all of his health and burned his flash while the minion wave was pushing, so Renekton doesn't even really have to go back. Huge advantages for TSM there. Yeah, but it's going to be the TP for Bjergsen to go back to the mid lane as well, so... More things going nice for these guys. Catalyst, they're amazing behind Bubba Dub. Gonna land a bit of damage. The slow plan actually dealing some damage as well, but Gleeb still pushing in. Bubba Dub gets rooted up. He goes down. The flash is late. Westrice TP's in, but Amazing gets out. And unfortunately, another missed opportunity for complexity there. The teleport, at the very best, it saves Bubba Dub's life and puts Westrice in a lane he might not want to be in. But I guess they're doing a lane swap anyway. Corky's going down the bottom lane. They didn't like the Red Acton 1v1 matchup and they're trying to force elsewhere. Maybe this will pan out better for complexity, but so far, all TSM. All TSM indeed. 600 gold lead for these guys, thanks to that first blood. And you know that mid lane, by the way, not even going forward with 49 to 47 in minions. So kind of everywhere down the line. Dyrus even ignoring Robert just to kill minions off quicker before he gets away from this one. Really not a hardship for TSM. Yeah, Dyrus needed to get all the minions down he could before he's going to be trapped in a 2v2 lane. Or 2v1 lane, rather. Right? Yeah. Dyrus hit W a touch too early there and broke his first auto attack. Wild Toad are going to get his way down across map as well. Looks like this is a match that TSM wants to keep finding the two on two lanes, the one on one lanes. Amazing. Only level four here. He spent so much time helping out Dyrus. He's got almost no XP. Bjergsen will get this blue buff there. Amazing gets level five off of it. He's got some room to go. Bubba Dub gets a little bit of money for himself. But yeah, it appears like Amazing will be all right, despite that 
weakish level four look. He got the level five off the blue, and it's really the rest of his team that he's allowed to survive. Surprisingly, though, Wild Turtle is actually we weren't paying much attention to lane because there was so much action bottom. Uh, Wild Turtle's fairly far behind Robert and Bubba Dub, so we heard them in that pregame saying if there's a weakness of the TSM team, it's uh, the bottom lanes they can take, bottom lane which they can take advantage of, and they took a small advantage of them. It's just a matter of if the rest of the team can capitalize. And what they're going to talk about with sort of capitalizing action, the fact that, hold on, oh, probably taking some damage. Bjergsen shields it, doesn't care. Um, the difference in item builds on supports as well, because Glebe went tier one into an early sight stone for really good ward control. A bit of what Frostbang for more gold generation, but yeah. he's relying on wards he's bought. Now, Kalexi has just enough wards. Wait, the ward on Dragon just timed out. There's a chance yeah. Bazin gets in undetected. And there's a chance that Frostbang comes back to be too early of an, of an upgrade. Zyra does that almost all the time in her build path because she does need a little bit more ability power to become effective as a mage there. But they have a real risk of getting uh, lost objectives here. The jungle invade is unseen and they have no eyes on Elise. No dive coming though if Elise is just going for Dragon. Might cost him the Dragon though. They ping the tribe rush ward so that Amazing knows about that one. But otherwise, you're right, he's going to play it much more safely. Broken Shard, though, on top of the ward, is going to start blue buff out. Amazing, waiting in the wings. Early smite by Broken Shard. If he shows up, he can steal. Yep. There it is. <laughs> Nicely done by Amazing. One of those things, you're so secure in your own jungle. I've had it happen. If your buff doesn't get stolen 20 times in a row, you, you just smite early because you want the cooldown faster mm -hmm. and because he's going to be handing off the buff anyway. But he should have saved it that time, especially because they had no vision control going into their jungle, they had to assume the worst, and they didn't. Yeah, not even a single sweeper on the Kabuxi lineup right now. No one was able to get rid of wards. They had no way of knowing that was trinketed. And it was, and that was a really, really good steal. So, gonna be a mid lane lead for Bjergsen. 76 and 72 in minions. You can see him now bullying out. Yeah, Every time he trades, as well. the, the shield makes him really not killable. So West Rice now, again, under his turret. Amazing's on the other side of the map, but Dyrus goes in for the fight, pops shields. He does he have the damage he needs. West Rice just forced to now be low on health under the yeah, turret. Dyrus is getting again. Low. He's waiting for his spell cooldown to come back up. He could kill him with the spell. Oh, no! Oh, the outplay is it real. West Rice almost gets it, and Dyrus barely squeaks away. Wow. Big move there by Dyrus. He was... Very nearly giving that lane back. That's one of those very risky plays that if he loses would be a bit disastrous. But he pulled it off, and I don't know if Westrush can recover now. And it's going to be a 30 minion difference plus actually equal levels right now, 8 to 8. But yeah, I mean, it's it's going to get worse more before it gets better. The makings of a T amount now coming in for Dyrus against Double Thorns Boots 1. Not the best start for the man. So it's going to keep getting... Scary and scary with this Renekton. And here comes the TP, the Plague, looking for the bottom lane. Gleam going to land the sun onto Bubba Dub. Nowhere for this guy to go. Broken Shard shows up, kicks Gleam into the turret Whoa. and gets out using his body. Good one for one for that one. Nice play there by Broken Shard coming in for the save. He act, He's missed a lot of those plays so far in the LCS, but he definitely makes that one work. He gets a kill back for his AD carry. Uh, kill for Bjergsen, however. Tough trade. we got to take another look at this one. As they lock down with Gleam, See the teleport coming. It's a safeguard to a flash to a different person. That was sneaky. Still, I, I have to watch that a little bit in slower motion. It's great. He flash kicks support, then cues to get away. Mm -hmm. Who needs safeguard when you've got resonating strike to get out of your fights? Pretty sweet play. Okay, one for an overall plus a five minute teleport down on Bjergsen. What I kind of like with the TP mid lane is even though you have less kill pressure, hold on, West Rice. Okay, some damage. Even though you have less kill pressure with Ignite, the fact that you can stay in your lane and farm the entire time, then only TP when you need to, you never miss CS on your roams. Or you miss very little, or less than you would normally. Yeah, absolutely. Just a little bit less kill pressure. And honestly, for, this game is only 1,000 in gold, which I, just, I still don't feel like it's close. And this, yeah, I feel like TSM's team composition will have so much control. They brought double teleport in their solo lanes. I feel like they're just going to be taking over probably by the 20-minute mark. Well, what it's worth about 100 gold difference among the GP10, so that's one-tenth of the extra gold deficit as Baba has been out-farming Glebe from the from the support role. Sight Zone is done. Bjergs is going to roam up. I don't know if that Trinket actually saw him. Broken Shard and Westway is both going to recall yeah, back. that it was Trinketed. They're playing towards the back. They're at least playing safely enough, but Dyrus... Yeah, he was just seen. Yeah, okay. Complexity now knows, so they're going to stay safe. 
Molly also trying to shove down the lanes to make Bjergsen pay for that roam. He's going to miss maybe a few minions here, but not a ton. Ogreshad still around to help defend West Rice's two on two just to get Jax some farm. That baits the out. Nice play. Tricky move. He baited out the free spell. He got awesome. mana. All right, you're right. It's a human form spell. He just doesn't do damage. He's got like 90% mana still, but hey, it's a cooldown burn. It was very flashy. I like the play. Still, 1300 gold. Bjergsen farming very well. Uh, in the mid game right now, where Kassan isn't nearly as strong as he would have been in the past, but with the way he's farming and the way TSM is equipped to set up kills with all the crowd control they have on everyone, I think they're in a very good position to win this game. Look for maybe some dragon fighting, especially when Dyrus hits level 11. That'll be a big spike for the guys when his team at comes in. Uh, probably has it by the time he recalls, but just hasn't gone back for it just yet. 40 minions now the difference among these top laners. Between them specifically. Chain vest also for the guy. A bit more tanky news. Khalid's gonna sweep away a pink ward. TSM, you know when the support goes for the dragon area. That's when they're gonna start it is let's get the ward control, let's get this all set up. Yeah, they're getting actually red buff vision control right now, which isn't isn't required. It would actually mean they're not respecting Complexity's Dragon Control whatsoever. Yeah, they're playing around the fact that their top lane's already winning. They say if we oh, make man. plays up here, it's guaranteed to work. West is going to find a bit of damage, but gets stunned away out of range. Amazing gets out, heals up on the Golem, kills one. And Dyrus is completely zoning his opponent away from Golden Experience in that lane. Yeah, this would be the time where Complexity would say, hey, everyone, go to Dragon, but they're kind of respecting Dyrus' teleport and strength a little bit uh, too much right here. They get the stun of West Rice and Last everyone stun. goes Here's for it. there as well. West Rice has the stun available, but he's taking way too much damage. Good kill picked up by Dyrus. The turret ends up falling as well, but this is a dragon they've given up to Complexity. Not even the most beneficial trade, aside from the fact that it guarantees control over West Rice for Dyrus, which they're going to translate into more plays later in the game. Yeah, there's a bit of an invisible advantage of the fact that like three minion waves got denied that whole time top lane. West Rice has been pushed away yeah. that entire time. The turret did go down uh, amongst all of that. Here's getting a last hit here. Still holding equal in minions in the mid lane, but as Cassidy, that's a good thing. Yeah, these dragon for kill trades are always so intriguing because they have different value points as Bjergsen continues to beat on Prawley here in the mid lane. Is you can do the regular math and say, okay, the goal from the dragon, which is around, depending on the area of the game, Let's say that last one was 750 or so. Sure. Versus a kill, which is going to be 450 shared. You think the dragon's better, mm -hmm. but not exactly because there's the minion waves you talked about, and then the future individual farm advantage of that other guy, and how many rewards that's going to translate into. Oftentimes, it's worth getting a kill to give up a dragon if you get it in the right spot. Yeah, and I mean, you think about you know where did that dragon gold go anyway? And the AD carries, well, they're both at bloodthirst. Roots one, not really a big difference in power spike, so. There's a part of that gold advantage that didn't really go anywhere. For example, mid laners still just fine. They've both finished their first big item. So yeah, this, this diffuse dragon gold might not mean much for complexity. We'll see if it means a power spike somewhere later on, like the Trinity Force being done when it would be. Yeah. The value changes completely depending on the matchup, which yep. is why I like these decisions. Because we so, we so often, because we don't have time to in a game, dismiss it as being like, oh, that's a good trade for them. They got more gold. Or, oh, it's just a trade. But. On a case-by-case -case basis, sometimes it's a huge win, and here I thought it was a big win for TSM. Well, Dyrus gonna get stunned up a little bit, does take some turret damage, probably getting pushed away though in the mid lane. Big damage comes out, the culling flashed away, some plants help out with this one. Six Bomb drops from the half HP, and they disengage. Yeah, now they're trying to get that mid lane pressure going. Well, Bjergsen is off in the bottom lane, getting more farm. 150 CS for casting in 16 minutes is a lot. Well, Astro just keeps wanting to fight too as well, but yeah, oh, here comes Amazing, does not land the stun, though West is forced to flash. CSM continues to have control over that lane. Robert X Lee not having a good trade against Bjergsen. Level 11 Kassin, he could go back in. Yeah, he's got to be careful <laughs> as he valked away right as the ultimate came back on cooldown. You mentioned the longer cooldown of 11. Bjergsen's really going to want to hit level 16, then he might take over. Yeah, just for the legal, hitting 11 for now. Good job by Robert to know the timing by heart and be like, he could jump me now, so i yeah, my 50 there. mana get away. Wild Turtle and Gleeve, though, ready to pressure this mid lane. Looks like the Lanes have moved around. Bjergsen will solo bot for a while, but the mid lane is now being pressured. Amazing's here to counter jungle while this all happens. Look, this turret will be falling. Complexity cannot muster the forces to defend it in time. And we're now two turrets to zero and four kills to one. Complexity is very quickly running out of options. There is too much stun control, uh, not necessarily enough vision control, and everyone of Complexity is just continually running away from this TSM team trying to chase him down. Westridge gets away with just landing a... A W from Lucian, no big problem on that one, but 
four of the jungles being stolen away. You're seeing Amazing now nearly level 11 for this one, taking camps away from Broken Shard, who's only level 9 for himself. So you're, you're seeing advantages all throughout the map. The thing about counter jungling is the, the CS lies to you, because if you take the white, it's only 1 for 0. If you take the big villain, it's 1 for 1. Um, Ray sometimes is a 1 for 3, but you're getting more value out of it. But certainly Amazing's been counter jungling a lot off his advantageous lanes. Now Robert X Lee, portion of the 1v1 against Darius, but here comes the TP in. Can West Ray save him? Well, forces Darius away. And he's gonna keep chasing. Is there the damage? Nope. Jumps the wall. So TP for forcing Darius back. Not necessarily the best trade is now down, which means TSM can aggress elsewhere. Good Sasha retreat there. Glee will not land the binding. TSM, they're not gonna lose this turret. Here comes a teleport and an Elise. All right, big plays coming in, but up very, very low. Puts the spam down. He will get away from Lucian, actually, at least for now. But Bjergsen over the wall finds one with the Force Pulse. And out they go. More kills for TSM for nothing lost. 2 0 1 onto Bjergsen and Distortion Boots because he's going to be wanting to teleport a whole bunch more. And this is really, it feels a bit like a throwback game for TSM. We had mostly standard lanes. Mm -hmm. uh, they're up three turrets to one, almost three turrets to zero. I remember so many games way back in season two where TSM would just kind of win all their lanes, get three turrets down to zero, have a 5,000 gold lead, and then win by 30 minutes. Yeah. And it's almost fitting that it's a Dyrus against Westrice game because <laughs> they are both players from the season one world championship. Mm -hmm. Westrice and Dyrus actually used to be on the same team and they would swap roles depending on which champions they were playing. Uh, now, of course, they're both LCS top laners, but the old feeling of the game is still here right now. A whole bunch of fun watching how these guys all go. We're gonna see if they can keep it on moving. Dyrus getting pushed away right now by some Corky Rockets. That's fine. Their other ex-teammate, uh, Double Lift, we'll be seeing later on in the day. Sorry, I felt like keeping the history lesson going as we wait for some fight. Called there. Epic Gamer. Epic Gamer. Only yeah. Salsi and Dan Din are missing. The rest of them made the LCS. Double Lift with the. Brave support of that team. Occasionally Jungle it. Lee Sin, who famously face checked depression, and died. <laughs> now Crawley level 12 right here. Gonna go ahead and keep the minions under his control as best he can. Didn't actually quite take that little Wraith right there, so. Still the gold going into Bjergsen's favor. Robert X Lee now, all the complexity right now. Instead of trying to make plays, they are freezing as close to their turrets as possible, yeah. trying to accrue gold and just catch up. But and honestly, track it's up in 15. They need to try this type of style because they were losing pretty badly when they fell behind a little early and they just tried to make plays all over the map and really press for things. And we're saying, you know, they should stop pressing for things and kind of let the game come to them. They're mostly trying to do that here. And it's funny because the plays they actually have tried to make, like the teleports from West Rice, have lost pressure for them on the map. And that's actually when they've gotten most of their deaths. TSM isn't really making any super creative, aggressive moves. They're using their double teleport to react to what Complexity wanted to do, which is honestly a very good game plan. The times Complexity has tried to make an action, TSM has reacted with something even better. And without the Ignites on TSM, their playmaking from zero isn't that strong, and they know they can outfarm without it. So overall, it's a very solid strategy. And you're seeing it work out for these guys. Almost a 5,000 gold lead, TSM. Looking pretty good. Winning around the Siege, of course, very hard against a Ziggs and a Zyra. If your name starts with Z, you tend to be pretty good at killing minion waves, though. It's going to be Complexity able to defend for a while. And heck, if you can defend for a while, a Jax can eventually catch up and start doing his thing. De Westrace not to the best start. He doesn't even have 24, though. So. Yeah. 21 minutes in. He's definitely been kept down. That's the fear of that early Jax pick against a TSM team, especially with Dyrus. Yeah. And they focus heavily on keeping Westrice down. Well, Stun's gonna come out against Bjergsen, but he's forced to run away. I don't think he has the damage to pick up the kill, but he's gonna try. Bjergsen putting the damage down on Westrice. Force Pulse is back up at the last second, but puts it down to a quarter, forcing him under the turret. He's gonna go away on this one. And yeah, you mentioned the fact that Triforce wasn't done yet. Westrice had been bullied out by Dyrus so hard, he had to stop and pick up a Ninja Tabi. 675 gold. Which is... Take less damage in lane. Which is a disaster against an Elise Morganic team. And a Morg... Yeah. Because if he actually gets in a team fight, his, he won't be able to move is the biggest thing. Actually, last game, Zion Spark uh, started Ninja Tabi on Jax and sold them for Mercury Treads. And that was just against a Morgana as far as mid, uh, mid lane crowd control goes. Mm -hmm. Westrice won't be able to do anything. He can't split push against Dyrus because he's not strong enough. And a team fight is going to get hit by crowd control. It's a pretty rough spot now if you're Jax in this game. See if he can turn himself into something later on. But right now, it's not the case. Dyrus walking away from the blue buff. We still don't see Complexity really holding any of their own jungle right now. You can see TSM's wards actually 
two pink wards in the upper jungle, trying to control the red buff in areas around that. And a few deep wards in the blue buff jungle as well. Yeah, now uh, 4,400 gold lead. It's slowly accruing, and it's just the control that GSM has. Not, a act not an action pack game, but they're getting to the late game of Kassanen, where he will just take over combined with the crowd control everyone else has. Wild Turtle's going to be hitting his items. They don't have to worry about late game a super late game AD carry, because they're against Corky. It's like a mid game AD carry that's kind of scary. Yeah. If anything, they have to worry about the siege potential of Ziggs. Yes. Which will really have to be their main focus. This is interesting is actually how well can TSM, you know, just keep playing the gold game versus actually closing the game out. We've actually seen a couple of games now today, just today actually, where a team gets the early lead and then can't quite hmm. make the right moves. Dignitas's earlier game, TSM against Curse actually went back and forth for a yeah. while. Um, and, you know, they talked about it in both cases, where it's like, yeah, you know, there's plays we could have made that would have been working out a little better. Rogashar getting set up, though. A lot of CC's got nowhere to go. Finally, Wardhouse, but the culling is going to be enough when Wild Turtle takes one. Nice shot right there by all of TSM. The Dark Binding landing just to the culling. Now they can teleport in, trying to force a Baron. That was the small window they are waiting for. They have the smite down. If anyone comes for them, they're going to stun him and lock him up to kill him. But unless it's a full engage of a fight, they're not going to be able to stop this Baron from being taken by Amazing's Smite. Well, here we go. Broken Shard dead for eight seconds. Retro Complexity still trying to show up for it if they can. Bombs come out. Some good harass does come through. The ultis are available. Can Six they spike down? Good. Can they get it rid of it? Here comes the spam. The damage comes out. Smited away by Amazing. But the battle has begun. Dyrus falls one for zero so far. Here's a push away in the back line, but a nice amount of CC from Gleeb might make it good. So far, two for two in this battle. Probably Westrice. Trying to fight up against Amazing, that bomb's gonna miss the chase in, there's the repel, the damage output pretty massive, another kill picked up, Westrice turns it back around, 3 for 3, Westrice, can he go back in for anything, the stun not gonna land, jumps to a ward though, Bjergsen claims that one, Broken Shard, gonna turn back around. And even though there's only two people currently wearing it, the Baron gold does go to TSM as a whole, let's take another look at this one, they took a lot of damage inside the pit, which was rather dangerous, but remember, it was a 4v5, and Gleave got off 8. Great start to the ultimate, which scattered complexity. Cassidy and Elise thrive on scattered team fights because of their mobility. That's how Bjergsen is able to hop over the wall, finish him off, stick around for Westrice. Despite his little stun juke right here, he's able to just jump on and finish him off again. And that's a very fed Bjergsen approach in the late game and a slightly larger gold lead because of the eventual results of that bear fight. I like how well Bjergsen actually timed his, his rift lock as well. He was mid cast yeah. animation when the stun ended. And he was like on top of him. Like, yeah. the instinctive timing of these players is really impressive. And I'm pretty sure in the middle of the fight, he actually let it refresh because he needed the mana cost to reset. It doubles every time you cast it. He spent a large part of the middle of that fight letting it go down. Uh, and one other thing, TSM got five sweepers. Yep. They had so much control over the map, they didn't care about where Complexity went, and they were just looking to starve their vision. That's the whole reason they got the catch on a broken chart in the first place, is because they'd starved that vision. Bjergsen goes for the juke towards the top side, gets some good damage on Westrice. He's got to be careful, oh, the Kale's Kale. forced to be used, but Westrice is like two hits from dead. Bjergsen goes in, takes him down in the 1v2. Yeah, the mana return mechanism on his W was very prevalent there. He was actually out of mana at the start of that. Hit champions a few times with it, got enough to rift walk him to death. I believe gonna pop the ulti and the Zonias, and here comes Dyrus as well. The burst comes in, they pick up one, but Robert Xlee now is on the wrong side of the fight. He's gonna go down to amazing. Probably on the wrong side of Dyrus as well. Two for one so far. Elise claiming some kills. Now Bjergsen gets one more for the squad. 6-0-2 oh, to the cast of 3-0-5 oh, on Amazing Elise. Yep, and just like that, all the vision denial, the champions reaching their point, and the vision controlled the map by Bjergsen. That's that level 16 casted and taken over. Whole oh, bunch of damage comes out right there. Maximum W left, three points in that one, but up to the top inhibitor they go. Wild Turtle, Amazing, and Dyrus all put damage. Only West Race alive. This will mean at least the turret, likely the inhibitor as well. Now 12,000 gold lead. It has just ballooned in the past few minutes here. 15 kills to five. Easily taking this inhibitor, and Bjergsen is a force to be reckoned with on Cassidy. Gigantic. Rod of Ages, Void Staff, and Azonia's Hourglass just to make sure nothing really happens to him. And the mid lane under fire as well. Bjerg takes the aggro, doesn't care too much. Couple skill shots land. New complexity go in. He looks for it, but jumps back to a minion. No major damage, but Cocoon did land on the Corky. He's got to be careful. Amazing in the front lines as well. More AoE comes down. Do TSM stay with the Baron buff? The Juke away, just barely reaching that one. But three man root and West Race goes in. The damage comes out. Zyra ulti as well. The team's forced away. Repel still in the air. Amazing getting out. But there's still regen from Baron buff. Yeah, they're wanting to get this second inhibitor down to greater. 
secure their advantage in this game. And with how aggressively they're posturing their freak, there's really not much complexity can do. They landed the three-man route yeah. from Zyra and could not fall. Let's take another look at this team fight, though. Uh, it was Glebe getting a little bit caught out, and then he just ulted Zanius to delay for everyone to come in. Dyrus jumped in with his ultimate. Bjergsen actually had to go to base to heal up, and then he could teleport in, but once he did, it was over. Oh, Smite Attempt not going to be taken. Brogashard can't quite claim that one. There is an Elise falling from the rafters, and Amazing will go down. Kill credit goes to Broken Shard's Lee Sin, but Dragon for a kill, still good for TSM. Yeah, that'll only delay 40 seconds, then I feel like TSM's gonna try and end this one. Uh, I expect five people, or four people, down the bottom lane. Well, two ways of super minions pushing this. You know, uh, Dyrus is the wizard right now. How so? Well, he wants to did steal your souls. Did he the soul war? He did start the soul war. There's no Thresh, but he's still got a soul stealer. Oh dear. And he's got a blue elixir, which, to be fair, I actually have seen sometimes as, a, as the correct buy. Not in this case. A lot of cooldown reduction. It's valuable on Renekton. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the AD and health would help more, but um, Ramus would be one I'd say, okay, Blue Elixir's worth it for the uh, ball curl, but no, Darius just wants to be a wizard. Awesome. Well, more power to him. He did great this game. Yes. You know, he's growing a beer, so he's a bit hairy. All right, for <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're gonna move forward though. Looks like the bottom lane now gonna be under fire. Two inhibs already dead. Two minutes till Baron's back up. And here we go. Gonna make their way for that tier two, not even contested by complexity. They will move. Ooh, Bjergsy took a bunch of damage there. Yeah, there's some good poke coming out. You know, Kazza doesn't have any real innate magic resist, just the, the passive on him. You can poke him out with a shield down. Yeah, if his teleport's not up yet, he'd love it to be back up, then he'd just teleport back into the fight here. Uh, Westrice is gone to clear minion waves. And I feel like TSM, exactly, this is what Amazing should be doing. He's taking inside the base to make it more difficult for Complexity to hold the front line in front of their turret and should hopefully make it fall the minions. Let's see if they can make this one happen right here. Bottom inhibitor now is going to be under siege. This turret surrounded by five members of TSM. Westrace forced to hold the top lane. Here comes the minion wave. Good hold so far. Westrace, Jackson, one of the better minion holders, but Darius just all thing becoming a monster and trying to finish off that turn. We go big damage, Brokeshire, then a half HP, the dive on, and the Ziggs ulti as well. West Race, he get a bunch of pain, but so is Dyrus. Zyra ulti, gonna be actually dodged by everyone. They pick up one, Bjergsen now oh, legendary, West back Race in. low. Double kill so far for Glebe as well. Only one member alive for Complexity. Bubba Dub, the last man to fall. TSM with a clean ace. That was kind of what TSM was hoping for the whole game. 10-0-4 on Bjergsen Kasten. He got to late game, 30 minute win for TSM. Darius goes with a touchdown to close it all out just to be sure it all worked, but that's going to be the game. TSM now with the winning record in the LCS. Yeah, I mean, they did lose to Cloud9 on day one, but they're taking care of business today. Yep, tough game against Deck Special, but then against Complexity, a team that has failed to pick up a win thus far in the LCS, they just straight up take care of business. So good play all around and amazing. I think he went near Deathless for, for a large part of the first game. This game, 3, 1, and 10. The new roster picker for TSM, I gotta say, he's doing quite well. Gleeb in the bottom lane. Yeah. The, the laning phase wasn't great for them. I think Complexity did start very well in the 2 on 2. But in team fights, did his job, got the zones off, got the engages, generally playing quite well. And with a game like that, leaving the man off a lot during the game, he said he looked sharp. Amazing. That fan would like to tell us. Yep. They're getting there for sure. And you can't expect immediate domination by a team that brings in two new team members. But they're very focused around Bjergsen. They're good at that. Amazing is very strong mechanically, as we've seen from his Elise play. And I think.